Hello there, welcome to uh, lesson number six in our series on using Fluid Designer for 3D printing to create pendants. In today's lesson we're going to show you how you can create a torus pendant. So if you start Fluid Designer up, uh, first thing we need to do is to go to Learning Projects, Jewelry Projects Pendants. And we're doing lesson number six. So if we drag 06 onto the workspace, um, I'm just going to switch on the screencast key so any key presses I make should be displayed down here. And uh, this is the object that we're trying to create in today's lesson. It's a twisted torus, so if you follow a face around, it will come back on itself, it twists around on itself. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's also uh, a, a, a connector, we, call, we refer to it, a connector at the end here with a hole in where the chain would go through. So this is the object that we're going to create and in the help panel here it tells us the instructions on how to do it. Um, so we need to add a mesh, a torus object and a twisted torus. So if we go to add mesh, torus object and twisted torus. You can see we can't quite uh, see the object at the moment because it's quite small. If you look at the values here it's only 2.5 by 2.5 millimeters. So if we just zoom to selected we can see what the object is. Uh, it's a torus shape, it's got this torus ring, um, and uh, at the moment the external dimensions from the outside to the outside are 2.5 millimeters. Um, and that value is made up of one millimeter being the major radius, which is the distance from the center to the middle of the tube, so that's one millimeter. 0.25 the minor radius is actually the radius of the tube itself so that's 0.25 millimeters here so we've got one millimeter major radius to the center of the tube 0.25 takes you to the outside of the tube so that's 1.25 millimeters on that side same 1.25 millimeters on that side gives you a total dimension of 2.5 millimeters um, now for this lesson we want to change the major radius to 10, so as you can see as we uh, change the radius uh, the uh, tube is getting bigger and bigger. I can drag it with the mouse, the left mouse button, holding it down and just dragging so you can uh, visually see what the effect is. Not easy to select an exact value of 10 doing it this way, it's much better to just type it in as 10 and press the enter key. So we've now got uh, an object uh, a little bit, uh, well, more in size terms looking a little bit more like the object that uh, we're trying to create um, certainly in terms of the external diameter as you can see it's now 20.5 millimeters so that's made up of 10 millimeters as the major radius so that's from the center to the middle of the tube that's 10 millimeters plus 0.25 that's 10.25 if we double that uh, we get 20.5 millimeters as the external dimension. We now, however, need to uh, increase the thickness of the tube itself, and that's where we change the minor radius. So as we change this, you can see the objects thickening up, uh, and the X and Y dimensions are increasing as well. If you look over here. Um, now we want a minor radius of 2.5. So if we just type that in as 2.5, there we are. Um, we've now got uh, an object that's got an external dimension of 25 millimeters. So again, that's 10 millimeters from the center to the middle of the tube, plus 2.5 millimeters to the outside, that's 12.5. Double that, you get the 25 millimeters. So that just gives you an idea of what these do. Um, now the next thing we want to change is the major segments. Now it's currently 48 and we want to change it to 30 in this exercise. Um, now the best way to actually understand major segments is if I just hold the left mouse button and take it right down to three, three major segments. The three major segments are one segment on this side, two segments, three segments. So it's three sided, three segments. If we change the major segments to four, we've got one two, three, four. So the major segments are the segments around the whole object. Similarly, five, six, seven, eight. Now the higher this value, the more rounded the shape becomes. So, uh, and also the, the, if you go really high, if you take it right up into the hundreds, which you can do, 
you get a much more smooth object. If you take it right back down to uh, three again, you get a very chunky object. So it depends on the uh, style that you're looking for as to what you want to set this value at. So they are the major segments. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the minor segments. Now again, if I just take this right down to the lowest value, which is 3, what we've got there, if we go around the object, not going around this way, but uh, around in this direction, 3 means one segment, two segments, and then one more segment at the bottom. So there are three segments around the object. Similarly, 4 means four segments around the object and then five six seven eight etc now we want to set this quite low we're going to set it at four because we want to just give it this uh, this style okay um, but clearly you know you can set these to any values that you want to suit yourself um, so that's what the minor segments is. The minor segments is around the object in this direction. The major segments is around the object in this direction. Um, now we've just got one twist on the object um, and we're going to leave that as it is. So the twist means if you follow one of these surfaces all the way around, in one rotation it will twist once. You can clearly change this. Yeah, You can increase it have to say it doesn't look great to me looking like that with lots of twists uh, but you know it's your style it's up to you at the end of the day what you want to produce um, I'm happy with one twist okay so we've made the changes that we need to do here we can see what the dimensions of the object are here um, we can close this panel now because we don't need to make any more adjustments to the torus itself what we need to do is to add this connector now, in Fluid Designer, we've uh, pre-constructed some connectors for you, which you can just add to the workspace. Um, so, if you go to 3D Templates and Connectors, um, there are various options to choose from. And we're going to uh, use this object here, this 5x5x3. Five by five by so, 5x5 five by five means it's 5x5 uh, five five the square base. 3 is the, is 3 millimeters is the diameter of the hole. Now if we just drag and drop this object onto the workspace, this work will disappear because this is a blender file. And if we open a blender file, the existing file will be closed. So what we need to do is to use a function called append. Append means any object that we've already created in the past, we can add it to the current workspace. That's what append means. So if we go to file and append we need to go up through the menu system because we're in jewelry projects pendants at the moment and we need to look for 3d templates connectors and we're going to use the connector that's got that's five by five by three so it's got a three millimeter diameter hole and it's rounded on the top and what you're looking for in here is not world or text or scene and it's not actually mesh what you're looking for is the object so you need to go to the folder object and we select the connector 5x5x3 five by five by rounded and we append it from the library. So we add it to the current workspace. So there's our, our connector. Now it's a little bit bigger than the one that's currently on the screen there. Okay, we've, uh, I'm just choosing a slightly larger one for this exercise. That's, um, this connector here is actually quite small. The hole's only one millimeter diameter. Um, which was the original size I chose to uh, construct it at. This size, 3mm, is a much better size to use. 1mm diameter chains are really, really tiny, and you do need to consider carefully, and I made a mistake when I first constructed this, I think, 1mm diameter hole is very, very small indeed, uh, and uh, when you're 3D printing, you know there are toler tolerances to consider, and you may well not find that your you may well find that your chain doesn't fit through. So um, three millimeter hole might be better. So we need to position this now on uh, the side of the object. So what we need to do is to drag it across, and uh, if we just go to view and front, 
what we now need to do is we need to rotate it um, and I can rotate it here let me just zoom back um, so you can see what's happening um, the objects currently highlighted uh, the axis on which we want to rotate this is the y-axis that's the green axis we want to rotate it that way effectively bring the bottom up here and the axis we're going to rotate it about is the y-axis so if we click on rotation here we, oops we've got the wrong object uh, rotating there it's actually the twisted torus that I'm rotating so even though we move this object it's not selected yeah we've got the connector selected now it's the connector we want to rotate so if we select y and we just need to see which way to go and as you can see it is rotating it up there now okay so if I actually type in 90 degrees um, there we are we've got it fitting now as you can see this is a little bit too thick at the moment so we have got a three millimeter hole there but uh, this connector is probably just a little bit too wide for this object so um, well first of all let's let's position it uh, Let's view it from the front. Okay, so um, we we need to uh, narrow it down a little bit. So I'm going to uh, I need to change the Z dimension. So I'm going to reduce the Z dimension down to six. Nope, that's not doing it, is it? Not the Z dimension. Okay, let's have it. Let's try with the Y. It's not that one either. Uh, it must be the X. Okay, yeah, it is. It's the X dimension. So I've just moved the X dimension down. And as you can see here, it's just sticking out at the moment. So what I could do is I could just move that to the right a little bit. Okay, so yeah, that's all right. I've positioned it now. Um, now this has obviously changed the shape of this hole by doing this. But it's also done something else. When you resize an object the vectors, the translation vectors will change. Whenever you resize in fluid design you've always got to reset these vectors. So I've changed the thickness of this so what I need to do is to do control A and to apply the scale and confirm that uh, reset the um, scale back to 1. That's something you do need to remember in fluid design. Um, so there we are, so we've positioned that now what we need to do now is to join the two together. Um, so I'm going to highlight this object and delete it with X on the keyboard. Um, and the reason I'm deleting it is that I don't want to uh, be confused by this object when we join the connector to the torus. So we need to join these two objects together. Now if I just look at, if I just switch to wireframe and zoom in You'll see what we've got at the moment is the connector is the grey bit and the grey bit clearly is inside the torus. Now you cannot print in 3D with faces on the inside of an object. So what we need to do is we need to join these two objects together and the way we're going to do it is using something called Boolean Algebra. So this is a set theory in mathematics and um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a modifier. So we click the modifiers icon, add modifier and we're going to use a boolean modifier and what we need is the union we're going to join the two objects together so we're going to create a union between the twisted torus and the connector and then when you see that happening what you can see is that the grey area on the inside that's going to be deleted by fluid designer when we apply this modifier and we'll be left with just the yellow bits. So the way we can apply the modifier is to go to Tools, Object Tools and convert it to a mesh. Now if I just switch back to uh, Material Mode, you can't actually see uh, entirely what's happened here at the moment. Um, if we zoom in, you can see there are some, you may be able to see some yellow lines there. Now what's happening is whenever you use this Boolean operator, you always end up with two objects. So you've always got to move the object out of the way and delete the extra copy, in this case the connector. And if we now switch to wireframe mode and zoom in, you'll notice that there are no internal faces now. The Boolean operation has deleted the internal faces. 
and that's what you need for 3D printing. So that's why we needed to use the Boolean operator rather than this join function. doesn't quite do the same thing. So there's our uh, twisted torus now. So what we need to do is to save it. So if we go to file and uh, always go to save as, go up through the menu system. Um, it's a pendant. So we go to my projects, jewelry projects, pendants and save that as a blender file. And you can't print blender files and you always need to check these meshes. So if we go to file and export the wavefront object, if we export it to the desktop as a twisted torus object, and uh, then if we go to NetFab Basic and open it, probably going to find that there are some problems. Um, so we open 06 Twisted Taurus, and sure enough, there are some issues. Um, whoa, that looks pretty bad, actually. God, is that going to work? Okay, well, we've got some gaping great big holes there. Um, well, let's see what uh, Fluid Design, uh, sorry, what um, NetFab Basic does. So we go to Extras and Repair the Part and uh, just move the screen across and let's click on update and apply and do the automatic repair and execute it and click update again so okay so all the problems have been sorted out here um, and yeah no problem well it looked horrible when we brought it into uh, NetFab Basic but NetFab seems to have uh, identified all the issues there and it's well quite amazingly fixed it it's even surprised me actually um, so what you need to do now, you're happy with that, we click apply repair and remove the old part and just have a look at it again. So yeah, that's that's looking pretty good. Um, looks like we may, we may just have put the connector in a little bit too far there. That line may suggest that. So it might be worth looking at that again in Fluid Designer to see what's happening just there. But other than that, NetFab's done a great job. Um, so what we need to do is um, go to part, export the part as a wavefront object, export it to the desktop as a twisted torus uh, repaired file. So there's it. That's the end of uh, this lesson. Thank you.